everybody, Trevor here, and welcome to my first video of November 2023. Halloween has already gone by, and now I'm hyped for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Today's topic will be on my top 5 animated sequels. Now keep in mind that this video does not really count for Disney Month because not only will I be including a few Disney and Pixar ones, but also a couple non-Disney properties such as those by DreamWorks. And besides, Disney Month is already over. So without wasting any more time, let's begin this brand new top 5, shall we? Coming at number 5 are Toy Stories 2 and 3, as well as Finding Dory. You may have already known that I love the Toy Story franchise, as well as the Finding Nemo sequel, Finding Dory. Let's talk about Toy Stories 2 and 3 first. In my opinion, they are the absolute best sequels in the Toy Story franchise because not only they were well written and had emotional moments, but I loved the new characters in each one of those movies, including Jesse, just to name one. I also thought the third one ended the Andy saga on an overall perfect note because Andy is all grown up and had to go to college after donating his favorite toys to Bonnie because he knew she would take very good care of them. As for Toy Story 4, well, while I did enjoy it for the most part, but the ending was very anticlimactic because that road rage scene during the climax was all for nothing. And that's only because Woody decided to stay with his love interest Bo Peep and the rest of Bonnie's toys stay with Bonnie, which is obviously disappointing in my opinion. I mean, Woody and Bo Peep should have stayed with Bonnie's other toys at the very end which defeats the purpose of the perfect ending of Toy Story 3. Okay, now for Finding Dory. This is a sequel to Finding Nemo, but in this case, Dory wants to find her lost parents while Marlin and Nemo try to find her and bring her back home. If you've watched my Top 5 Pixar Characters video from last month, then you'd know why I liked the character Dory and her respective role in the sequel. I mean... She's so funny and wanted to do the right things regardless of her disability, which is short-term memory loss. I especially like the new characters like the octopus named Hank, as well as a couple seals named Fluke and Rudder, who don't like it when Gerald gets into their spot, so they bark off, off, off at him, which is one of the running gags of this movie. So in conclusion, when it comes to Pixar sequels in general, Toy Stories 2 and 3, as well as Finding Dory, are the best sequels in terms of writing, characters, and emotional moments here and there. I'm glad these were well received compared to most other Pixar sequels, which were either mediocre or just not as good as the originals. Number 4. Puss in Boots The Last Wish This is the sequel to the first Puss in Boots movie, which is a spin-off to the Shrek franchise. And to be honest, it's actually better than what I normally expected when it comes to DreamWorks sequels. The sad thing is, I regret not seeing this movie in the theaters when it first came out, because I thought it was going to be as mediocre as the first one, but thankfully, I was able to watch it on Netflix just to avoid too many spoilers. Those are the only reasons why this is number 4, but when it comes to the DreamWorks sequels in general, this is my most fair of the bunch, even though Shrek 2 comes to the close second. What makes this so good is that it has some of the most memorable villains including Death the Wolf Bounty Hunter, who was after Puss in Boots due to losing his 9 lives, and Jack Horner, who was after the Wishing Star just so he can have all the magic in the world. There's even Goldilocks and the Three Bears, who turn out to be sympathetic and therefore reformed in the end after the final battle. In addition, when it comes to new supporting characters, my favorite of which is the little dog named Perito who likes to pretend to be a cat, when in reality, he's a smaller dog. I like this character because he's cute and adorable, especially when he tries to show his big goo eyes at Big Jack Horner, even though it had no effect on him. As for the writing, it's really good. The plot is about Puss in Boots and his friends are trying to find the star before Jack Horner, Goldie, and the three bears go after it for the last wish. And to be fair, it's more interesting than the first one in my opinion because unlike Humpty Dumpty who was a twist villain, the new ones here are more obvious, which makes them quite entertaining. All in all, Puss in Boots The Last Wish was actually really good. The writing is spot on and an improvement over the first one. The characters are well written, including the villains, 
and the action was fun to watch, even during the climax. It was even great that Puss in Boots didn't get killed by death in the end, because I don't want the main character to, you know, die again. Next time when a DreamWorks sequel comes out, I don't always have to watch the first movie first just to follow up with the sequels. Number 3 is a tie between The Lion King 2 and Aladdin 3. When it comes to direct-to-video Disney sequels in general, my two favorites are The Lion King 2 Simba's Pride and Aladdin and the King of Thieves. Let's talk about The Lion King 2 first. While it may not be as good as the first one in terms of plot and characters, but for a direct-to-video sequel, it actually doesn't look that bad in terms of animation, new characters like Kovu and Kiara, Zira being a good villain, and some of the new songs, with one of them being my favorite known as One of Us. While the first Lion King movie was based on William Shakespeare's Hamlet, but with a happy ending, this sequel is based on Romeo and Juliet, but also with a happy ending. This is another reason why I like the sequel. Now let's move on to Aladdin and the King of Thieves, which is the third and final Aladdin movie. In my opinion, this one is a huge improvement over The Return of Jafar in terms of writing, because The Return of Jafar had plot holes and animation errors here and there. But you must admit, the best part of that movie, in my opinion, was Iago reforming during the majority of the second film. Aladdin 3 is loosely based on Ali Baba and the 40 Thieves, which is another classic story from the Arabian Nights book. But in this case, Aladdin is the main hero of this sequel, and had to find the Hannah Mayas for the sake of his long-lost father, Kasim. But he also had to deal with the new villain, Saluk, who became a traitor to Kasim, and later ended up turning into gold during the final battle. Another thing I love about Aladdin 3 is that, if you've watched the Aladdin TV series, there are plenty of characters from that show who made cameos during the wedding scene between Aladdin and Jasmine, which was eventually crashed by the 40 Thieves at the beginning. But the absolute best part of this movie is the return of Robin Williams as the genie. Yes, after he got replaced by Dan Castellaneta in the second movie as well as in the TV series, Robin himself was able to reprise his role as the character, and he's just as funny as he was in the first movie. For example, I love the Mrs. Doubtfire reference at one point in the film where he was trying to cheer up Jasmine, as well as the part where he dresses up as Moses at an earlier point in the movie. And no, I don't think this part was meant to make fun of the Jews because it's just a little joke, and all jokes are meant to be harmful. So, in conclusion, The Lion King 2 and Aladdin 3 are my most favorite direct-to-video sequels of all time because of these reasons alone. I suggest you give them an honest watch because they're 10 times better than most of the other direct-to-video Disney crap back then. Oh, and here's hoping that Square Enix will use events based on these two movies in future Kingdom Hearts games because I would love to fight Zira and Salute during boss battles. Coming at number 2 is An American Tale, Five o Goes West. This is a sequel to the 1986 animated classic, An American Tale, which was originally animated and directed by Don Bluth. It's about a mouse named Fievel who dreams of being a cowboy and wanting to meet Wiley Burp and suddenly gets his wish when a group of cats attacks the alleyways where the mice live so that they could convince them to travel to the Wild West for a better life, only for the mice to become mouse burgers. But thanks to Fievel's, Tiger's, and Wally Burp's heroism, they managed to stop the cats from succeeding. Unfortunately, I didn't have the first American Tale movie on VHS in my youth, but thankfully, I was able to watch some of it on television back then, However, when it comes to the American Tales sequels in general, the second one will be my most fair of the bunch because it had beautiful 2D animation, likable and relatable characters, great songs, and very funny moments here and there. Sure, the animation here is completely different from the original Don Bluth version, and that Don Bluth was not involved with this one, but it still looks nice compared to its other sequels, which were direct-to-video. I mean, just because the animation is different doesn't mean it's bad. Some of my favorite moments were with Tyler the Orange Cat, who was Fievel's best friend since the first movie. I love the parts where he and Fievel experience mirages, which turn out to be cactuses and a red owl. Not to mention that they even mistake each other for mirages, which makes it even funnier. Man, I love Tiger. He's so funny. And Tom DeLuise does an excellent performance as the character. Overall. 
While I can understand why most people prefer the original Don Bluth version, but in all honesty, I think this sequel is as good as the first one in terms of animation quality, likable and relatable characters, great songs, and very funny moments as I've stated earlier. And when it comes to American Tales sequels in general, I recommend this one for these reasons alone. Now before I get to my number one pick, I just want to give some honorable mentions. The other picks are sequels, including Cars 3, Monsters University, and The Incredibles 2. They're okay, but not as good and memorable as their respective first movies. The Shrek sequels. They got beat out by Puss in Boots The Last Wish. The Land Before Time sequels. Most of them are okay, but they're not as good as the first one. However, unlike the Alpha and Omega sequels, at least they managed to keep my interest despite how badly written some of them are. Joseph King of Dreams While I do enjoy this sequel and that it is accurate to the Bible, but I still prefer the first Prince of Egypt movie in terms of animation quality and emotional moments. But that's just me though. And the number one spot is obviously The Rescuers Down Under. I've already talked about this a couple of times last month, and I'll try to keep it brief here. This movie is a sequel to the first Rescuers movie from 1977, and it's about a boy named Cody who saves a mother golden eagle named Marahute, and eventually gets kidnapped by a poacher named Percival C. McLeach, who wants to know where she and her eggs are located, much to Cody's resistance. You may have also known that I put this movie as number one in my top five Disney Renaissance movies video last month because I found it to be the most underrated of the bunch because it had beautiful 2D animation, likable and relatable characters, funny moments, great action, and an awesome soundtrack. In fact, this movie deserves more recognition than what it already got, and the reason it failed at the box office was because not a lot of people gave it that much attention which is why I think you guys should give it an honest chance. The sequel was so good that I used to watch it on repeat all the time when I was little. I even did the same thing with some of my other favorite childhood movies too. Now, if there's one problem I have with this movie, it's never really explained what happened to the imprisoned animals at McLeach's hideout. Did they escape off screen? But oh well, I still give this movie a 9 out of 10 stars because it's really that great of a sequel. And as I said before, I suggest you give this movie an honest watch because it's really that impressive. Now let me know in the comment section below on which of these animated sequels are your favorite. Do you agree with my list or do you have your own personal preference? And it doesn't have to be Disney. It can be any company like DreamWorks, Warner Brothers, Universal, or whatever. This is Trevor Davis, signing off.